going to mug me? I might get a mug you. Is that gorgeous or what, eh? And I believe I can run the decent marathon. Download Veely now. A trip to the Czech Republic is a journey out of time. My next train is in four hours, and I'm going to Prague Castle. Prague, a theatrical city where the sets are not always like movie sets. The Czechs like to recall their Iron Curtain with irony. We play for freedom here, with fresh air since the revolution of 1989. Now, it's time for the bubbles of hope, the magic of the new gins and for the charms of its streets. Hello, welcome to the world scene from the train. I'm in Prague, the capital of the Czech Republic, a small country with a lot of charm. My train journey will take me to the heart of Europe, as close to nature as the Czechs like, some nice surprises and also some little gems. But before I go, I'll take you on a little tour of Prague, a lesser known city which is also the magical capital of Europe, as the poet Andre Breton said. So, come on, let's go. The town of Kafka is mesmerizing with its hands pointing up to the sky its castle high up on the hill, and its Baroque facades that are far from fake. We come here for nostalgia, the old empires on first name terms or to be admired like the princesses of yesterday. Yes, it's a truly bewitching city. I have an appointment with the curator of Prague Castle in charge of renovating this jewel of Europe. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Let's visit Prague Castle because the weather's nice today. Let's go. Ah, this way. So these are the palace, the cathedral, and the great castle, right? The big castle here. Yes, from here we can see the whole Prague Castle complex and the palace, which dates back to the Middle Ages, was only rebuilt in the 18th century, during the reign of Maria Theresa. This castle has seen many kings and queens, as well as also presidents of the Republic. I guess the Czechs must be very proud. Yes, Prague Castle is a symbol for our country, for the Czech state, and also for the history of architecture. Like you said, the cathedral has been home to many kings and sovereigns. This was where the coronations were held. This castle and its outbuildings have been renovated for years and years. But it also feels like time has stood still in another century, doesn't it? All centuries have had their periods of reconstruction. Nobody wanted an old castle, so everything was renovated in a more modern style. You can see all these different styles of architecture which represent 10 centuries of art. Even today, we're still renovating, and that's why we can see so much scaffolding. Today it's the seat of the President of the Republic, but actually everyone remembers the former resident, now President, Vaclav Havel. I'm sure your job must be exciting to be the curator responsible for the collections and the renovation of the castle. You like it, but do you want to carry on? Yes, actually, it's the continuity that's important. I studied art history, and soon after I became curator of the collections at Prague Castle. Kafka Castle loves metamorphosis. It has seen the centuries of the kings of Bohemia passing by power and glory. A castle with well-guarded treasures, it stands the test of time and its succession is assured. But it's time to get back on track to the modern city, an epic poem of architecture as Rilke wrote. Hello, 
Here I am at Prague's central station, a little jewel of Art Nouveau, built at the time of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and Prussian people are very proud of it. As you can see, there's the sign over there saying Praga Mater Urbium, which means Prague, mother of all cities. This journey will take me from Prague to the Austrian border, through Bohemia and Moravia, their castles and forests. An 800 kilometer rail journey that will take me to the land of legend. Well, it's full. There's no room. Looks like the Czech train is very popular. There are many people, youngsters, commuters, no room, it's too bad. So we're going to haunt the corridors. Here's the end of the train. I'm a little surprised because I found the door open, which is unusual for Czechs who don't joke about safety. Maybe this is for the stowaways. Morning. Uh, can I have some tea? Which one? Uh, black tea. Chai Charny means black tea. That's the only thing I know in Czech. So we are in Europe, but not in the Eurozone because the Czechs don't want the Euro. So we still use the Czech crown. You are traveling every day in this train? For me, it's just a summer job, so I do it only in summer or a few days a week. Okay. Okay, because you are a student? Oh, yeah. Where in Praha? Yeah, I study in Prague. I study math. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. And after you will work in uh, as teacher or research? Oh no, research? I, I probably will do something in uh, bank system. I study probability, so I'll do something in bank system. Wow, it must be very good, very efficient in the probabilities and the statistics, no? It's beautiful. Yes. You should try it. It's really... What about math teaching in Czech Republic? Is good? It depends. Sometimes they are not really good teachers, so children think that they are not good at math, as you said, but usually it's just about teacher, I think. Yeah. Because most, most children are very good. Sure. Nice. Very good. Nice to meet you. See you, Noemi. Bye-bye. The ways of Bohemia are rich in mystery. In Jeroma Bahoslav, a railway enthusiast is waiting to take me to his secret garden, a museum of old locomotives. Some of them date back to the communist regime, and some even older ones to the First Republic, founded in 1918. Wow, pretty, <laughs> above all, unique, a unique model. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to meet you. Looks solid. <laughs> yes, it is. It's solid. Are you the driver? No, I'm the mechanic. Oh, I see. Uh, can I help you? Yes. Yes, come here. Oh, you. Well, it's called getting your hands on diesel, not dough. Oh, you need many liters, huh? Ten. Ten, ten. No more. It's a hobby for you or it's an activity? This is my hobby. Yes. And uh, work and train. Oh, OK. Ah. So, so, huh? So, so. Hmm. Not enough. Aye. OK. I'll do little. it. Paul? A little more. Little, little. I don't see much. Stop, stop, stop. You, you know how to repair because this is a very old motor, very old engine, you know. I learned all about old engines when I was at Fireman College. That's the Tatra engine. I know it well because the Fireman had the same. The rest I learned here at the museum from my colleagues. And uh, so you, you love this job, this activity as a volunteer. Why? Why it's a passion? 
I've known this museum since I was a child. I've loved coming to see the locomotives. There was a steam one. I could see the people who took care of them, fixed them. Some even waxed them. Two uncles of mine also work on the railroads. I've been coming here since I was a kid, and I'm still here. I just love it. What is the speed? It's 25 miles an hour. <laughs> I will not be afraid. Huh? Yes. Not at all. Hello. Hello. You are the driver. This is driver. Yes, that's oh, it. Okay. I am Olivier. Yeah, I'm Olivier. Nice, to nice to meet you. Good driver. Good driver. Best driver. This is the speed. Yes, it's the gas. <laughs> So here we are on a small rotating platform trying to find the right tracks. Always important to find the right tracks for the railway. Be careful because you never know if there are people on the tracks or animals. Here's the high-pitched whistle. And then we're going to get a little bass. Tenor. Can I help you? Okay, I'm coming. Do you have gloves? Gloves, no. Thank you. Better with gloves on. Because you never know. We have to put the wagon back. It weighs tons. It's getting harder. It's getting real hard now. A tough one. You can feel it's heavy. Please help. <laughs> yes, Martin's strong. He's used to it. You can feel that. Okay, good. There's levers everywhere. They're poking my legs, but it's okay. It's a bit like Le Bête Humain, but a more modern version. Anyway, there's a lot of people on the tracks over there because it's a day off, a holiday in the Czech Republic. It's St. Mary's Day. There are a lot of people. Apparently the Czechs come with their children because they love trains. Good morning. Ah, good morning, I'm Olivier. Do you like the train? Since I was a child, I've always traveled by train. I still remember the old locomotives. The network is dense in the Czech Republic, so we can travel by train anywhere. Finished? Over. You want to go back home, huh? A nice train, a good driver, and a good mechanic. Thank you, Milan. See you. Traveling by train in the Czech Republic, a country of 10 million souls, also means having the craziest dreams. The mechanic Martin recommended me to go and see an amazing castle. The work of an old count, Frantisek Spork, who in the 18th century wanted to heal the poor in his palace. A wealthy patron of the arts who had compassion for other people and a passion for the arts. Hello. Hello, I'm Dita. Ah, yeah, Dita, nice okay. I'm Olivier, nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the castle and hospital here, the famous one of Cooks. It's not a castle, it's a hospital, but it's one of the most famous Baroque monuments in Czech Republic. So it's, I think it's quite interesting to see it. For what? For which purpose? There was such There's a no huge hospital here. Yes, because you need a part where those old people lived and you need a part where it was a monastery for monks mm. who took care 
about those people. So it had to be that quite sure, large. Sure. And why so many statues? What does it represent? Uh, the hospital was decorated by statues by Matthias Bernard Brown. There are statues that present virtues and vices. We have 12 statues of virtues and 12 statues of vices. So what is this, Dita? This one is called Hope. Hope, I guess. The anchor is typical symbol of hope. And this one? This one is love. Okay. Depicted as mother with love. Young mother with two little children. And those plants were here originally in Baroque era because Brothers Hospital has used them to produce medicine. It served mm. as so you can be treated herbs. by the yes, plants? Yes, yes, yes. By your patients? Mm -hmm. They're originally herbs. From the top of these stone allegories, three centuries of compassion look down on us and their secret door. Wow, it's beautiful. Well, there you go. We're having a little battle between the statues of virtue and the statues that represent vice. About 20 on each side, and it's impressive to see that in this old hospital, which was a charity, and also for the poor at the time. Wow, wonderful. What is this? An old pharmacy? Yeah, the old pharmacy, Baroque pharmacy. In fact, it's the second oldest mm -hmm. pharmacy in Middle Europe, mm -hmm. after the one in Klatovy, which is also in Czech Republic. And yes. you have different drugs inside, yes, yes, different yes. receipts? Some of them are quite extravagant. For example, human skull, mm -hmm. or for example, maybe hangman's bones. Or right. Still working, no? No, no, no. If I'm ill, you no. can treat me with <laughs> no. this kind of medicine. Mm. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it, no. It's amazing to see uh, so many medicines. <laughs> yes, medicine. yes, yes. You don't know all of them? No, I don't know all of them, but there How many are... receipts? Hundreds, no? Yes, of course, hundreds, maybe thousands. Do you believe in it, in traditional I medicine? believe, yes, it can be working, but you have to believe as a patient to it. If you don't believe to your medication, whether it's traditional or non-traditional, it's useless. Yeah, you, you have, have to, to help believe. yourself yes, yes, before yes. the sky will, will help you. Yes, <laughs> okay. I believe How so. many years to be a, still to be a doctor? You finish when? I have to study three more years. Three more years, mm -hmm. okay. And after you come back here? <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I'm heading south, as Dido recommends. All railways lead to Bohemia and Moravia. Even if the network is dense with its 10,000 kilometers, the traveler is never lost. The Czechs always enlighten you. They even seem to have a compass in their pocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The second, yeah, the second on the, on the right. Going to Kosen? Kosen? I continue on my way to more remote villages, through the Bohemian forests and kingdoms of old. You speak English, no? I want to be to... Uh, I want to be to Visoke Mito. Visoke Mito. Visoke so Mito. Is yes? It's yes. Right, okay. And up, okay, okay. This side, huh? There. Okay, yes. not this train. No, 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 no. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. On the docks, a farewell waltz is playing. But then, I confess, the railway maze, even if it's not expensive per kilometer, becomes complicated. And you have to play the leprechaun to jump from train to train. It's not working. <laughs> yes, it's working. I hope it's going to work. Ah, oui, oui, oui. Okay, take away, huh? Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye bye. Good morning. morning. Can I sit you? Okay. <laughs> How are you? Good, good. Fine, good. Okay. Thank you. Just married? Yes. Happy, so you are very happy. 
Always. <laughs> always, always. <laughs> always Czech Republic to live here, it's good? I think so. Yeah. It's no problem, no danger, I think. No danger. Okay. What are you doing? So, what is your job? Now I'm a librarian, and, but uh, I have studied in storage. Hi, sorry. You too? What are you doing? Uh, I work at the uh, tax office. Tax office? Yeah. To collect the money? Yeah. Yeah. Very important. And you're traveling for holidays or just for the weekend? For the weekend. Uh, yeah. From Praha? And, uh, we are living in the Kralovets Kralovets. Ah, okay. Not far. Not far. We are going to visit a castle in Little Michelin. Ah, okay. The famous castle. Yeah. Castle and church also. I'm going to see the church. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Morning. <laughs> this is Little Missile, huh? Little. Yes, that's Little Missile oh, with the I castle. castle. It's an old machine. Yes, very old. <laughs> So here at the end of the line is Litomisil, which is an old historical town, and we can go no further. Thank you. Bye bye. Goodbye. Czech castles also hide some amazing secrets. With its Renaissance decor, the small town of Litomysl looks like a miniature and quieter Prague. In the bowels of the Republic, liberated since the fall of the Berlin Wall, ancestors sometimes have funny faces. Here I am in the cellars of Little Mistle Castle. It's a magical place where there's a lot of modern things. And now I'm in a heart, a heart of wax. It took 5,000 kilograms of wax to produce this, the heart of Czech national hero, Vaclav Havel. They wanted to show that the hearts of men and the heart of Vaclav Havel were obviously very vulnerable things. A heart that makes copycats where we thank the former dissident and where we wish for love. In the church of Little Missile, which was converted into a garage during the communist era, we found a taste of union and of ceremony. Its architect and renovator, Marek, invites me into its towers. Wow, wonderful. This is a very historical town here. Can you show me what's, which of yeah. this building here? Yeah, we can see Chateau here. It's really from Renaissance time. And uh, in this place between these two buildings uh, also was cathedral. And, uh, but it was destroyed uh, in 14th century. And uh, Little Michel is also a very old city and uh, it's growing up very much in 19th century and now mm -hmm. uh, because uh, city government is, is very clever and uh, uh, they like life and architecture. I think it's uh, one of the best cities in the Czech where you can live. Yeah. All right. Can we see the church? Yes. Okay. It's a mammoth task. It took seven years for Merrick to renovate the church. Wow, wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. So I'm sure it was a big challenge for you as an architect to renovate all the building. What was the aim for you, the challenge? Yeah, I like the churches at all, and especially this church because uh, it designed uh, Ali Prandi in Baroque time, and uh, the church was in bad condition. Yeah. 1968, uh, it was closed by communists, and uh, for example, 
pa parking cars uh, or uh, 20 centimeters of guaran on, on some part. It was uh, like a feeling of of destruction. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fantastic place for you, actually, uh, to imagine. You have you wanted to combine, actually, the traditions, the historical, let's say, architecture and the modern one here? I like the touching history by modern parts, yeah. That you can see, for example, this little bridge here. Uh, it's like quintessence of uh, our work here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or this uh, part where are some numbers uh, from history of this, this church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now it's uh, not only sacral function here, it's also for uh, exhibition of sacral art or for modern art, for tourists also. Yeah, this, it's like uh, touching this uh, another type of life here. Yeah. An air of swing to restore luster to castle life. Even if it's underground, it doesn't hurt. It is true that the Czechs, long deprived of their liberty, are regaining their liberated years. It's time to go and leave the music behind us because I'm due for a treat for the taste buds. Hello, Remy. Olivier, hello. Uh, nice to meet Welcome. you. You too. Welcome to Le Bistro de Papa in Czech Republic. So this is the Czech-French restaurant. A little, and I hope we'll have a good time together. Great, I'm with you. Great. Well, it's very pretty here. This is my little paradise on earth right here. Honestly, there's nothing more beautiful and nothing nicer for me. I really am so in So you came heaven. here and fell in love, oh, right? Yes. A real crush. Impressive. I think it must be pretty inspiring for your recipes, yeah? Definitely. You just have to take a look in the morning and think how lucky we really are. And around here, that's all it really takes to well, enjoy. Well, it's almost time to enjoy some food right now, so let's check out your kitchen. Come on, let's go. Let's go then. Married to a Czech woman, Remy is a passionate chef who loves innovation, but also the marriage of flavors between the two sides of Europe. For the past few years, his inn, which is very popular, is fully booked three months in advance. So this is your den right here. So that's my cue. That's my little kitchen. Oh, it smells good to me. Are you preparing the ingredients? So we have today, since it's autumn, it's mushroom season. Yes, I can tell. And here we have a tradition. They make needle bread. Oh. Or needle dumplings, like dumplings. Yes, it's kind of like a canel. So for fun, I added yeah. pheasant and poultry wow. with small potatoes. And we're going to make a little cream sauce because I like the little creamy things. Pheasant, poultry, potatoes and mushrooms. It makes your mouth water. Can I taste it? Help yourself. We're going to make the little sauce. So we add the cream. I put it here. We pour the cream into it. A little cream on the Czech mushrooms. There you go. And it's a great recipe. Smells good, doesn't it? Oh yeah, it's going to smell good and it tastes good too. This is the sauce for Nedliki, the famous Czech recipe, but it is your recipe? It's a recipe of mine. It has some semblance of Czech Nedliki, but with French cuisine. With a personal touch. Exactly just like me. It's the traditional recipe. Let's call it Remy's Nedliki. <laughs> anyway, it smells good. I hope you let me taste it. No way! Ah. So we add a little cheese. Cheese on top for gratinating. And you're putting this in the oven. And I close the door. Recipes for food that we feast on. Decidedly in Bohemia, they love tradition, including that of the master glassmakers. At the end of the village, I'm going to go and visit one of Remy's friends. Jan Rebel is an entrepreneur who took over this glassblower workshop, which is two centuries old. Here, the art of glass has remained intact, despite a long sleep, a tradition that certainly does not lack breath. So, this is a factory, this is a big challenge because before it was a 
estate company. Was it a big challenge for you to rebuild it? It was difficult because uh, in the communist time the technology was totally different and we produce here in the Einstein just small pieces. Yes. The new technology permit us to, to make and to produce big, bigger pieces uh, for different international brands. And I'm sure you are exporting a lot, but at the same time, you have to uh, maintain actually the qualities of the uh, products here. How can you do it? Because this is like to be an artist. Yes, this is very artist production because it's handmade blow and you must to combine the artistic with the ma okay. more massive production because the lighting glass, which we are specialists, is more mass production, but still artisanal and still handmade blowing. No? Yeah. So it's very difficult to combine this. No? Every production is customized. No? Yeah, sure. And I'm sure it's a very hard job, actually, to blow the glass. Huh? Very yes. hard. Yes, it's very hard. It's a very physical, a very hard uh, work, no? And today is uh, is a problem to to find the people who want to to to, to work in this yeah. way. What do you need as qualities? Do you need physical abilities or not? No, it's not big. The, no, they they must to 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 to, to be not big or, or strong. No, they must use uh, the mind, the, the brain. No, depend always of each second of each step. Next step, no, so they must to know. All right, I'll try. Well, there's 200 years of tradition in this factory of master glassmakers, so here I am, just a modest apprentice. This way? You have to blow. Not too hard. Mo! It's my first day. Here you go. Not too bad, huh? Congratulations. More, more, more. Okay, perfect. It's hot in here. I remove this. I take off the mold, and that's it. Ah, better. Here it is. Finally, a real shape. Congrats. I'm a good student. Yes. You can't hire me. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. It's a good job. Thank you. So I'm at Star Station. It's raining. It's a bit sad. I'm hoping to go meet some nice people on board. Good morning. I'm Olivier. Nice to meet you. Lucas. Okay. Hi. Morning. You are going to Bruno too? Yeah. Okay. Yes. 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 So what are you doing? Uh, uh, we are dancers. <laughs> dancers? Yes. All right. We are working uh, as a collective with uh, dance, theater, a little bit of new circus also. All right. Like a mix. So you are professional dancers? Yeah. Yes. Modern? Contemporary? Contemporary. Czech dance? No. Czech yeah. French. Czech International French. 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 Okay. Uh, when, when will you do it, uh, the next uh, event, let's say? Uh, now we are rehearsing a new project, but uh, it's going to have premiere in December. Oh, in December I will, uh, I will not be here, but maybe I can see you dancing or training, or if it's yeah, okay yeah. for the passengers. It's unbelievable because Lucas and Florent are showing me a preview on the train. The passengers don't move. It's as if it was normal. It's wonderful. It's all right. We're in the most creative and improvised place. Hats off to the Czechs. It's 
It's quite creative. It's called Walk on the Ceiling. <laughs> well done. Fantastic. You are astonishing passengers, huh? Because. <laughs> A theater spilling out onto the tracks, and a ballet that makes you dizzy. Well, it's not for everyone. That's <laughs> incredible. Okay, I wanted to say goodbye. The way, this is Florio or Lucas? Okay, bye bye, Lucas. Ah, no, no, we change. Bye bye, Lucas. Good luck, huh? Good training. I'm going to discover Brno in Moravia, an unknown province. A very cultural city where we fought against the windmills for a long time. Hello, Camilla. Hello. I'm Olivier, nice to meet you. I'm Camilla, nice to meet you too. How do you say, Brno? Brno. Brno, okay. Brno. Let's yeah. go. Let's go. <laughs> I follow you. <laughs> a city brimming with energy. Friends of the two dancers, Lucas and Florent, and organizer of festivals, Camilla knows all the secrets of Brno. Wow, beautiful theater. What's happening here? Uh, this is one of the most important Czech theaters. Mm -hmm especially before the revolution. It was a very important place of resistance and of, uh, of dissidents and, and, and people who, are, who were protesting against the regime. In front of the communist era. With the dissidents, with yeah. Yeah, This is the center of experimental. Oh, this is the main guy here. <laughs> Hello, yeah. Vladimir. The director. <laughs> the director and director of today's play. Is he, he's a friend of Václav Havel, no? Yeah, he's a friend okay. of Václav Havel. Okay. Václav Havel was coming here also because of Vladimir Moravec and he was okay. reading his plays here and I just yeah. so, saw it. Uh, if, if, if this is not the capital here, why uh, Bruno is so active in the cultural scene? Close to Vienna, close to the, another capital, Bratislava, mm -hmm. and I think it's always the role of the second city. You must be always better okay. than the others. In competition, no? Yeah. Fantastic. Let's visit the place. Yeah. Brno is a city where people like to chat and converse in bars and pubs. I have an appointment with Camilla's friends at the city theater bar. So Martin is a writer. Huh? What about the cultural life in Brno? Is good for you as a writer, poet, to write here? The atmosphere is good? Oh, I, I think uh, uh, the, the, the best thing for the writer is that there is no government no uh, regime that would actually forbid you to write what you want. It's only that I need. It's, uh, I, I don't need uh, the bigger cars uh, on the streets. I don't even need the different mail on the Rad House, uh, city house, townhouse. Uh, I only need to, to be free to write what I want to write, to say what I want to say. It's good enough to write what you want to say. It is definitely okay. Yeah. It, it is still okay. Still okay. Yeah, the situation is changing. I do not uh, think that it is improving, actually, in a political way, but it's still okay. I'm 54. I was uh, 27 uh, on the November 89. Yeah. When the, the things revolution. changed, uh, yeah. the Velvet Revolution. That means I, well, I can remember what we had before. Not so old, I'm not the one who forgot. No, <laughs> not sure. What will be the next book, so? It's a thick novel. A big novel. Uh, the, the, the name is Rome. 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 Okay. Yeah. Maybe it will change. <laughs> yeah. It's about Bruno? Most, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's about the, the men from the Czech Republic. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. 
Morning. Is it to Olomouc? Olomouc. Okay. The next stop is Olomouc, straight ahead. Alamuk well deserves its nickname of the Pearl of Moravia. In this once religious student town, rich with 28 churches, the gods are gently mocked. And that is Czech humor. And on the astonishing astronomical clock, proletarians and peasants have replaced the traditional saints. But the clock is ticking, and a great composer is waiting for me. Hello, Thomas. Hello. Nice to meet you. Here we are in the Jesuit College, where the Artistic Center of the University of Palaki is located. Okay, let's go this way then. And you're a specialist of Baroque music, right? Not only me, but the whole city invites us to organize Baroque music festivals. And tonight, you'll be at one of those concerts. I founded three festivals here. Thanks to the scores that we can find, we organize a festival with compositions that mix old and original works. The archives in the Czech Republic are full of unknown operas and librettos, so our program is still very rich. And every season, we present six world premieres. Beautiful. That is the soul of Alamuk, Baroque harpsichord, inherited from the church and from this city which is very ancient. Is it important to pass on your knowledge and teach music to younger people? We're trying to carry on this tradition, even though we feel today that we don't really need the music. But music builds man much more than mathematics, for example. I've composed some operas using old music. It is known that the composers in question composed full operas, but only a few pages have been found. So I used their choral music and composed a new line. We've created new operas from the little that we found. There you go, it's from the 18th century. It's very old. Thanks to Thomas, he found it in a monastery here, a Jesuit monastery in Olomouc. He saved the score from being forgotten. Oh, thank you, Thomas, for that special music lesson. You're a true enthusiast. It was nice meeting you. Goodbye. I leave Thomas to attend an event two floors below in the Jesuit chapel. A concert of Baroque music, of course. As you can see, once again, Czech people are music lovers. Czechs love music. They come to Baroque churches, like tonight, thanks to Thomas, introducing them to beautiful old music shows. It's wobbly. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Can I sit here? Yes, of course. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Okay. I'm Martin. Martin, okay. How are you? You are traveling by train also? Yes, I'm going to northern 
Moravia to okay. start a miesto, to do some filming, photography and stuff like that. Are you a photographer? Huh? Yes, yes. Oh. It is my uh, passion and also living. Okay, what are you doing exactly, Martin? Landscapes, uh, for fights? Ecology, agriculture, a bit of landscape, yeah. photography. Uh, why are you so involved in the organic field? So I'm in help my father with the company, with the showing how the how he farms the things and how, yeah. where the, the farmers are getting the produce from and that uh, this thing is sustainable and it's really much better for the animal and for our health and for the health yeah. of nature i will try to as much as possible but i also help other farmers on other farms in czech republic to make them videos photos and stuff like that that can help them promote it themselves it works yes i hope so <laughs> <laughs> An ecological conscience that is well inspired given the beauty of the place that just wants to make its own path. Among nature's treasures is Lake Palava, which is highly prized by the Czechs for its landscapes and fish. Hello, Aleš. Hello. You have big fish. Look. Yes. Uh, uh, it's good this... to eat. Yes, uh, this uh, silver. Yes, uh, there are spider. catfish and bass. So this is your farm run here. Ano, tady vlastně tohle to je jedno ze středisků. Yes, this is the fish processing center of our fish farm. We process fish that we also raise elsewhere, and at the same time we repopulate the lake. Many fishes in the lake, yeah. Yeah, this lake's pretty fishy because it's shallow and sunny and also because the food is natural. So fish reproduction is quite important. So it's still a good job to be a fisherman in the Palava Lake? Well, being a fisherman is the best job because it's a job of the heart. And if we do our job with love, then it's the best job we can have. You love your job, huh? I love my job very much. Very good. Maybe you can see some fish. <laughs> I can catch them with my hand no? because they are very close. Look. <laughs> yes, something is possible, but if you are good, you can try it. <laughs> Under these waters is a sunken village with almost nothing left. So this is the church. There's no. Uh... No houses. Yes, uh, before uh, making these uh, lakes, uh, there was a village. Uh, the name of the village uh, was Mushov, and the church uh, is the last uh, building from this village. So for you, Alesh, it's very important to protect the environment. You think uh, you are doing well in Czech Republic now? I believe protecting the environment is fundamental to the modern man, not only for ourselves, but we do it also for our descendants, our children. I think for today's man, nature must be part of yourself. The protection of the environment and being in the nature actually provides us with an inner calm and the strength to go further. And we realize that our activity gives us meaning. If you protect a place, then life comes back to it. It's something that warms the soul. We all need to feel that feeling and to give love to nature. Every train in Moravia has an encounter. At 31, Milos is already a professor of political science at the university. He's taken me to the border, my last stop. So uh, here, Milos, uh, we are where in Czech Republic? In the margin of Europe or in central Europe, in the heart of Europe? Definitely the heart of Europe. <laughs> you know, uh, I don't think that anybody from the Czech Republic could think about the Czech Republic uh, differently. We love the idea that we are the, the heart of Europe and uh, of course as many nations we like the idea that we are somehow uh, important or crucial for the history or maybe political development in Europe, so yeah, definitely the heart. Yeah, 
you have some dream for personal, personally for you, but also for the Czech Republic. Which are the dream of the young people? I would say that my dream for Czech Republic uh, would be to destroy the communist uh, behavior and a new way of thinking in, uh, in our minds. Because I would say that the 40 years, the era of 40 years of communism is still shaping our behavior as a society. And I can see it uh, even in my generation. We don't remember communist era, but uh, as we were educated by the teachers, by our parents who were shaped in communist era, I think it still, st still has some uh, connotations to us. It's... Here we go. Oh, this is fresh up. An arc without triumph. In 1815, an Austrian prince dedicated the curious monument lost in the forest to his father and brothers. From now on, this colonnade is a doorway to peace and hope. Here it was a, a former monument built by the prince Liechtenstein, who was a general from Austria. Mm -hmm. Now, well, what, what's the purpose for? Today it's just, I would say, touristic uh, attraction, but it used to be the watchtower during the communist era because we are really close to the borders with Austria. Uh, it's three or 400 meters far from here. And uh, as we are in the breaking point in the Western and Eastern Europe, this was quite a tough place. Yeah, tough. And so the Iron Curtain was just behind us. Today it's exactly. totally open. It's, it's so totally free to cross the borders to Austria with no limitation. Yeah. It's good for Czech people. And I'm sure, Milos, for your personal dreams, is it? Definitely, it is. OK. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Milos. Thank you, Milos. Thank you, Milos. That was the world seen from the train in the Czech Republic. Encounters with endearing characters in provinces which are often unknown but worth the detour. In short, this is a country that energizes. Thanks for following me and see you soon.